One of the nation's top legal minds is weighing in on a possible Supreme Court ruling that could make same-sex marriage the law of the land. Professor Robert P. George, who lectures on constitutional law and civil liberties at Princeton University, is praying justices will vote in favor of biblical marriage, that is, marriage between one man and one woman. I still hold out uh, some hope. It's, uh, it's uh, not confidence, <laughs> but some hope that the Supreme Court here will do the right thing. It looks like the vote will be five to four one way or the other. Justices are expected to decide by the end of the month on whether states must issue marriage licenses to same-sex couples and whether they must recognize same-sex marriages performed in other states. The high court could vote to overturn same-sex marriage bans currently in 13 states and make same-sex marriage legal throughout the country. We know how four liberal justices will vote. We know how four constitutionalist conservative justices will vote. Uh, it all comes down to Justice Anthony Kennedy. So it'll be a five to four decision one way or another. I'm still hoping that Justice Kennedy will permit marriage law to be determined as it always has been determined, and that is by the legislative branch and not imposed by the courts. And this is essentially a state's rights case, isn't it? Well, states don't have rights. States have powers. People have uh, rights. It's, it's about the constitutional separation of the powers of the national government and the state governments. That's, I think, what you were gesturing toward with the concept of states' rights. The question is, who has the authority to determine the meaning of marriage uh, for the people of the United States? Historically, traditionally, and under the Constitution, that authority rests with the people acting through their elected representatives in the states. It doesn't rest with the federal government, and it doesn't rest with the courts. For the Supreme Court to impose same-sex marriage on the country would be an unconstitutional violation of that separation of powers between the national government and the states. It would be the imposition by a, an arm, a branch of the national government, on the states, and it would be an imposition by the least representative branch of the government, the unelected branch of the national government. It would be a pure judicial usurpation of the power of the American people acting through their elected representatives. So it's not so much a question of states' rights, it's a question of the sovereign people living according to their own constitution, having their power usurped by an unconstitutional, indeed anti-constitutional act of the judiciary. What should people of faith be doing during this interim period before the Supreme Court rules on same-sex marriage? Number one, praying. Prayer is the most powerful weapon we have. Number two, speaking out on social media, uh, in their communities, with letters to the editor, uh, with their workmates, with their families, uh, making clear to everybody what marriage is and why we are so determined to defend it. I fear that if Justice Kennedy is led to believe that he can impose same-sex marriage on the nation with no uh, resistance, he will do it. I think he's less likely to do it if he thinks it will be another Roe versus Wade. It will generate another resistance movement like the pro-life movement and will embroil the culture in another 40 years of cultural war. I think that's what Kennedy will probably be backing away from if he rules the right way. But in order to cause him to back away from it, we need to make it clear to him that we're not going to give up that we are going to stand for marriage, for true marriage, and we will do it for 50 years or even 100 years or 200 years if necessary. We will not give up. And while the nation waits for the Supreme Court ruling on gay marriage, tens of thousands of people have signed a pledge in solidarity to defend marriage and to engage in civil disobedience if the marriage decision ultimately infringes on religious freedom. Among the signatories are Matt Staver, chairman of the Liberty Council Action, Dr. James Dobson, founder of Family Talk Radio, and presidential candidates Mike Huckabee and Rick Santorum. The pledge website is defendmarriage.org. For IllinoisFamily.org, I'm Monty Larrick.